Hey, it's Aurea here, and today we'll be doing a session on washi tape. This washi tape is a dendrite inspired tape. It kind of looks like seaweed and tangled up branches. If you mull your own paints, you might recognize it on the paint molar, those that happens to me a lot, but it's just really tree branch inspired seaweedy look. And I love incorporating it in my scrapbooks and art journals and anywhere I just think I need a little extra touch in a project. I was actually kind of going on a walk the other day near my house and there's this old abandoned house and this gorgeous old, I think it's an oak tree. And it just reminded me, I was kind of having this problem trying to think about what to do with this project that I'm working on, which is kind of an exciting project. It's resin papers that I'm turning into little tea lights and I made them with sumonagashi papers. But the problem is the washi tape wasn't sticking very well and it just was like, how am I gonna solve this problem? I was adding washi tape that I bought at the store and it just kept peeling off and not really sticking very well to these little lanterns, which again, I'll be sharing this soon, hang in there. So yeah, that little walk just helped me clear my mind and I got excited about washi tape and I thought I'd throw this little tutorial together for you. So let's get started. The word dendrite in Greek means tree, which you can see from this example that I printed out recently, it really does have that tree branch look to it. It also is reminiscent of coral, even patterns of our veins in our lungs and hearts, river systems. It's just such a natural pattern and I just love it. And I started making a little bit of this tape uh, a few months back and adding it in. And today we're just gonna start with regular masking tape that you can buy at the hardware store or maybe one that you use to tape off your watercolor paper or when you're doing inks or watercolors, any of those tapes will do and will be perfect for this project. You'll also need three to four glass or acrylic panels. I'm using acrylic. You could pop something out of a, a picture frame. You'll also need some acrylic paint and these are kind of a low grade, student grade. They're a brand I bought here in Italy just from kind of a card shop. They're nothing special. And what I'll be doing is putting some tape on first and getting that uh, washi tape kind of set on one of the acrylic or glass sheets. And I just start taping on the tape one by one, lining it up, letting a little bit overhang of the edges so it's easy to remove and start to prepare these panels so I have some. You may want to do one or two. I, I It's kind of like jelly printing. Once you get started with this, it's so much fun. You kind of want a few panels so you can make a bunch of washi tape. And if you don't have a lot of panels lying around, which why would you, it's, they're not easy to come by, but like I said earlier, you could find old picture frames, maybe at a secondhand shop. But if you don't have those, you could possibly use some hard cardstock and slip them into some type of plastic sleeve. Now, that would be more for pulling the prints. You are going to need two really strong plates of glass or two acrylic, rigid acrylic plates to make that dendrite kind of ink squishing moment. But uh, as far as taping the, the, the place where you wanna have the tape, you could probably use, like I said, a piece of cardboard with some kind of nonstick, like a plastic sleeve slipped over, the, slipped over it so you could have some extra washi tape kind of blanks ready to go. Because once you get started on this, like I said, you're not gonna wanna stop, it's super fun. So I'm just starting to put some paint down and I like mixing my own colors. I have some turquoise here, some blue, and I always add in a little bit of brown, a sepia, and a kind of a burnt umber, just to make them a little earthier. And sometimes I mix it up too, put in some just full on turquoise. And I also like to put some darker tones in this as well. So I'm just grabbing my plate here and carefully placing it over the top. You don't have to be careful because the goal is to squish it, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm just squishing it around, blending some of these colors. Again, my goal was to make some washi tape today that will help me with my next project, the little lanterns I was talking about at the beginning. So I'm looking for some 
sea greens and blues and darker colors that I can use that will kind of complement those original sumanagashi resin papers I was working on. Now, the two plates will be kind of firmly stuck together. You could either wait for them or take a palette knife and try and pry them apart. If you don't have a palette knife, you could use a little kitchen knife. Or you could just wait for uh, the air to kind of seep in and separate the two plates with time. But I, know I don't have patience. I just end up always kind of taking some pressure and pulling the two plates apart. And sometimes you just have to give it a little bit of a tug and just you kind of feel the suction pulling them apart. And then you can see the lines have formed. This paint was kind of thickly applied. So the thicker the paint, the larger the branches. The thinner and the more or the more pressure you put on your plate, the thinner they're going to be. So that's why you'll find them a little bit like more spindly type branches towards the, the fine edges of where the paint ends. And then I just grab my washi tape and depending on how much pressure you want to put down on it, it will see how thick they're going to be. This first one, the, the branches were really, thick. oh, I'm loving this. I am so loving these colors and the dark brown that's bleeding into the turquoise. It's so cool. I take my washi tape at this time and just kind of move it around and decide where it needs more and just keep playing with it and seeing where it goes. So sometimes I'll push a little harder to see what happens. I'm using the little edges of the tape to pull it up. It's going over that kind of lighter brown color. Again, it was a, a little washi tape project I started a few weeks ago and I didn't finish. And just taking my time, pulling the prints, moving the, the washi tape around the, the acrylic dendrite pattern. And if you want, you could even grab some extra paper on the side and pull some prints for just some collage papers. I'm using a little bit of this vellum paper that I had on the side that I was mixing a little palette with recently. And just so the, the, the cool pattern doesn't go to waste and the paint as well, you can keep even using the paint and adding to it. And I realized the paint was a little darker than I wanted. I wanted to get more of a greeny gray going. So I'm adding a little bit of white because I would like to paint some of the washi before I even print on them. So I'm going to try that as well. And I have those pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to add a few uh, little drops of some darker pigment on here and pull some prints, hopefully, that have kind of a, a dark over the lighter background, the lighter sea green background. And I'm using basically just a sepia tone because I just want to have some dark kind of coral reef seaweed type of branches. And yeah, those are looking good. I'm liking these. So I'm going to keep adding here and going around as I did before, adding different layers and some I will push a little harder so the branches will seem thicker. Others I'll just kind of lightly tap and pull back up and to get some different effects and see if I can get kind of a seaweedy look. And I'm going to keep playing with it, cleaning off the surface. I'm not going to run it underwater and dump this all down the drain. I'm just going to wipe it off and keep going on the same plate and maybe even just keep switching sides and printing on the other side. I really don't like wasting paint or having it go down my drain. So I do tend to just use a little baby wipe or a cotton wipe to, to wipe up as much as I can. 
And like I said, I'll just keep flipping the sides of these acrylic plates to get as much pr uh, prints out of them as I can. So they look a little dirty, but it works just the same. You don't have to completely clean them each time you do a print. I don't anyway. And I'll just keep adding and adding and putting more little branchy coral looks. Some of them I might just leave simple like this and enjoy their the simple patterns that they create. And they don't take much to dry, so you get to jump in pretty quickly and start to see how they look. One of my little tips I would say is get a few of these plastic binder sleeves and you can easily store them. I just take them right off the plates. We do a real tape reveal here where we actually the tape is the reveal. And it's just so much fun. You just take them off piece by piece and add them to a sleeve. You can pop them in a binder and you have them ready for your next project. And yes, I am trying it out on my lanterns to see if this is going to work for my project. And it seems to be working a lot better than the store-bought washi tape. It just holds, it's stronger, and I think it's going to be perfect for this project. I'm so excited, and I'm excited to get this project out to share with you. It's also fun to just keep adding some little elements to, like I said, your art journal, scrapbooking. Perfect for wrapping that little special present or gift. And I just think, I don't know, I think you'll have fun with this and maybe even be inspired to use it in your own way. I'm excited to see what you do with it. So that wraps up today's session. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank you for being here and sharing this time with me. And I hope to see you back here again soon while I'll be sharing more about that lantern project, resin papers, and all kinds of stuff. So see you here soon. Thanks again.